there. In the last video we covered very simple methods like the naive method or the random walk approximation with drift and today we're going to discuss some, some more advanced methods that try to catch the trend, the seasonality and the rest of the series. So let me show you this example. So this is the very famous data set in which you can see the number of air passengers versus the years from the 1950 to the late 1960s. And there are a couple of interesting things here. So uh, as you can see, there is some sort of periodicity. Probably this is related to the fact that in summer more people took the plane than in winter, for instance. You also can see that variability grows in time. So the difference between these valleys and these peaks is different in, in, in for instance, in 1950s and in the 1960s. So you can see that these differences are huge here in comparison to these ones. And also we can see a, a growing trend. So clearly the number of passengers on average is increasing with time. So we are going to try to capture these three parts of three, these components of the data series and this is called decomposition. So basically this is called decomposition and the idea is try to capture the function that includes some trend cycle which is this linear kind of average growth and the seasonality and the regular part which is going to be informative about how accurate is our prediction but also is going to give us information about how to predict the future. So let me show you a couple of examples. So here you have a, a couple of time series from, from Spain and Sweden, and here you can see the temperature in three years. So clearly the trend is almost flat. And then you have this, this black line, which is the periodicity. And actually you could replace the whole series by this pattern, this, this thick line pattern, repeated over and over again. And this means that temperature is pretty stable through the years. Of course, the shape of the curve is different in Spain and in Sweden. And here you can see that this is more symmetric and in Spain is more skewed. So probably that the weather in Spain is more variable than, than in Sweden. So what is left? If you remove the trend and you remove the pattern, basically what you have is pure noise. Or ideally, the only thing you have is pure noise. So there are different types of decomposition methods. So the most simple one is called additive models. So the function that we are trying to predict is simply the sum of the trend cycle, the seasonality and the noise. And in cases in which the variability of the noise, like in this case, in which you can see that the fluctuations are almost the same everywhere, you can assume that the, the noise is additive. Okay. On the other hand, we have multiplicative noise, like in this case, in which you can see that the, the variability is increasing with time. So for instance, in the number of passengers that we've seen before, you can see that the, the difference between the peaks and the valleys is lower at, at shorter times than long times. So in this case, you can assume that the signal is taking into account at the same time the, the multiplication of the trend and the noise, because you can see that the, the, the larger is the mean signal, the larger are also the fluctuations. I think it's worth mentioning that you can translate from multiplicative model to the additive model taking the logarithm. As you know, the logarithm of the multiplication is the sum of logarithms. So you can redefine your function. You, you have a new data set, which is the logarithm. And in this case, this multiplicative model is translated uh, really easily into this linear model. Okay, there are some mixtures of both methods. So sometimes you have the pseudo-additive decomposition in which the seasonality and the noise is multiplicative by the trend. But, but, but of course, you can have many types of decomposition. We are not going to cover them because they are not very interesting. So let's take a look at some examples. So here you have a data set included in the library FPP2. And you can see that this is a signal. So you have these spikes and these spikes probably ha have to do with different quarters or different years. So here you have five years. It looks like, I don't know, maybe summer and winter, you have some differences, but also you can see the trend, which is kind of the evolution of the, the number of, of manufacturing equipment produced in the Euro area. You can do this uh, very easily using R. So we have the function decompose, and if you plug this into autoplot, you can see that the original signal, the trend, the seasonality, which actually is interesting because it's, per it's absolutely periodic, so you can see that you have almost more or less all the, the same spikes here and there. And the remainder is, of course, the, the, the residual of the feed. So basically, if you add this function to this periodicity and you subtract that from the data, you obtain this pattern. Another example, what if you take this, this part in the middle? So what if you take the original signal and you just remove the seasonal part? Then you have what they call the seasonal adjusted or remove periodicity signal. And you can see here that you still have some spikes, but these spikes are related to the, to the problem itself. So it's not related to seasonality. So you can have a less distorted signal so you can understand much better how your business is working and so on and so forth. So here you have another example. In this case, this is unemployment. And you can see that you have huge 
fluctuations from summer to winter. And again, you can see that the seasonally adjusted uh, signal is, t is taking the pr probably the, the economic cycles, but not this yearly cycle. So this red line is much more informative than the blue line. So let's try to understand what is behind the function decompose in R. So the idea is really simple. So we are going to, to, to have information about the trend cycle using a low pass filter, in this case, a center moving average. A moving average, remember that you have one point and then you're taking the average around that point. So this is a very simple. Now we can define the detrended series, which is the original series less the trend cycle. In this case, we only have periodicity and the noise. Now we, we, we have uh, this uh, detrended series and now we, we can extract the seasonal component. Instead of using an average around the neighborhoods, we are going to average by the frequency that we have defined. For instance, if the this time series repeats by, by month, uh, the frequency is 12, then you take the monthly average if this is 7, but the weekly average and so on and so forth. And then you extract this function which is called RT. And then the, the noise, the, the reminder, the residual is simply the detrended seri series uh, subtracting this, this uh, monthly average that we have defined. So this is really simple. Of course, we are not going to do this by hand. We are going to use decompose, but at, at least you have a flavor of how this is working internally. What about multiplicative composition? But the idea is more or less the same. So we have the trend cycle and we're going to use a moving average. Instead of subtracting, we are going to divide. So take the ratio. And then, then we have the detrended series and then the regular component is just the division, not the subtraction, because now everything is multiplicative, so nothing very fancy. Okay, enough theory, so let's see an example. I'm going to create some mock data and I'm going to find this variable which is years. Actually, it's not years because later I'm going to say that the frequency is 12. So essentially we have uh, 144 divided by 12, that's 12 years, okay? And with this variable, I'm going to create this function. So this is the superposition of different signs. So a sign, uh, take, take a look at this. I'm dividing by 12, I'm multiplying by 2 pi. So basically this is repeating every year. Now here I have a four. So this repeats every six months, every three, three months and so on and so forth, okay? So this is a seasonal part, which is this superposition. This is like a, a Fourier series of, of some signal that I have created myself. The trend is going to be like a parabola, so this is decreasing with time. So you can see that this is the parabolic trend. And then I'm adding some noise, which is somehow related to the uncertainty. Again, we need 144 observations, mean zero, and the standard deviation is 1,000, because take, take a look at this. So I'm starting at 40,000 uh, 40, and finishing at 20,000, okay? And then I compose this additively, and this is why this is going to work more or less uh, well. And then create the time series with this data starting in 2009 and, and assuming that the data is repeated every 12 months, okay? And this is a plot the data, you can use sort of plot or whatever. Okay, so let's use decompose and we're going to see how good this is working. So decompose pr produces this output. So if I use plot or auto plot is almost the same, the same type of plot. And you can see the original signal. This is the trend. This is not a perfect parabola. And this is because I'm adding noise. And when you add some noise, in the end, you lost some information. And because of that, the estimation that I do of the seasonal part is not as good as I would like. And this is the residual, which is pretty much noise. So this is, this is good enough. Okay. How is this comp in compared with the original data? You can see some differences. In the first hand, there is some missing data at the, at the end. And why is that? Because I'm using a moving average. So basically, I cannot take the average of this point with the points that come before, because there are not points before. So one problem with decomposition, with additive or multiplicative decomposition, is that I'm losing some information at the end. The second thing that is striking is that the seasonal part is too spiky. And why is that? Because, because of noise, probably some of these spikes are related to the fluctuations. But this seasonality is overestimating that part. So this is not very good. And actually you can see that the real noise that I have created with this superposition of signs in, at different points is completely different from the real, sorry, from, from, sorry, from the inference part of the, of the seasonality. So this method is not very good capturing the seasonal part. So the composition methods are really simple and are easy to understand, but they are not very good. And actually there are some problems with them. So typically the trend cycle is the most difficult to find. So actually there is a compromise between having a very smooth function and having a function that captures the data. In this case, we know that this is a parabola, but in reality, we don't know how the real trend is. So this is really hard. And the problem is that this is affecting the estimation of seasonality and the, and the reminder. 
The other problem that has to do with future years. So the problem is that we are assuming that the future is going to be the same as the past, but the seasonal part is almost not changing in time. So we are assuming that we are repeating this pattern over and over again, which is not true in, in, in almost all situations. And the final problem with forecasting using this sort of methods is that it's assuming that the random the noise is purely random, so there are no correlations there. And this is not true in reality using this method. And the problem with that is that the extrapolation is going to be misleading. So typically the composition methods are exploratory methods. So I like this sort of analysis because with just one comment, which is decomposed, you can have a flavor of the trend, a flavor of seasonality with all its defects, and you can have a first guess of how is how good is this this sort of method. So most of the times these are simply exploratory methods, not but not something that you use for forecasting.